If you have 100,000 mastery points, 1 million points, or heck, even 10 million points if you're as crazy as this team of main from Vietnam with over 14 million points, I am here to show you some tips and tricks on Yon that you are guaranteed to not know. And some of them might give you a get out of jail free card when you're a gang. Alright, let's start right off the bat with Q. Spacing is an important skill to use when playing Yon, and you can get even better at it. So to become better at that, you can Q3 onto them, auto-attack them once, and then walk away. This might frustrate players into baiting them to engage on you. And matchups like Riven, this is really bad for the Riven if she uses a lot of her Qs to close the gap to you rather than dealing damage with them, resulting in a kill opportunity for you. This can also result in a nice combo where you do Q3, auto-attack, and then Q onto him once the duration has ended. Now this all depends on how close you are to the target. Max range Q3 hit won't give you enough time to auto attack the person as the stun duration has already gone by. If you are too close to the enemy, the enemy can return a hit because you don't have enough time to walk away. The right distance is just about here, so you have to kind of eyeball it. But doing some practice in the practice tool can give you the necessary experience to eyeball it. Your Q3 can be buffered such that you can escape crowd control or still go through crowd control. Now let's dive deeper with your Q3. You probably know that Yon's Q and W scales with attack speed making their animation faster. I'm also sure that you know that towards the end of Yon's E duration, Yon gets a free auto attack that extends the E after using Q3, somehow. Now, you can actually cancel this auto attack by inputting an ability command such as your W or your ultimate, which is very nice to finish off your enemies. Now, what if I told you that there is actually a way to extend your E duration further? If you have a blast cone, you can auto attack the blast cone at the end of your E duration. Then, if you land nearby an enemy, you can auto attack that person as well. Kind of weird, right? But now, what if you just cancel that auto attack with what we learned and just use an ability instead. Well, would you look at that? It actually works. And as said, this works for every ability, like a normal Q, your W, or your ultimate. Look at this weird combo, but maybe a rare scenario in your games. Auto attack the blast cone, Q3 the enemies, then auto attack the cancel from your Q3 plus E concept and turn it into an ultimate. Good tool to know in the back head if it ever happens. Note that you need maximum attack speed skill with your abilities for this to work. Another tip with your Q3 is that you can Q3 flash to kill unsuspecting players. Note that this has to be instant and you cannot be lazy on your timings here, otherwise you will just cancel your dash but the tornado will still go through. Also note that your Q3 follows where your mouse was, so if you want to flash a Yasuo wind wall you could do that without worrying about advanced trigonometry. However, if you do a normal Q plus flash combo then it will land wherever you are facing. Also here's a sick engage trick with Yon, so your ultimate is obviously hard to hit as it has a charge up time which allows people to respond to it immediately like flashing. However, your Q3 has a damage and knock-up effect around your character and your tornado. It works weirdly, but if you Q3 someone and you know it misses, you can flash on top of them and they actually get knocked up and take damage. Here you can follow up with an ult, essentially hitting them with an engage where your teammates can follow up. This is very useful to hitting high mobility ADCs for example and turn the tides of the teamfight. Your Q3 is very important for Yon. It allows you to engage, peel and disengage and way more things. This is why you should always look to have your Q3 up. Try to gain stacks wherever you can, wherever you are. This allows you to move around the map faster faster, make plays or escape if you're getting engaged on. You can extend the time you can get and have Q3 by utilizing the maximum duration of your Q1 stack and having a minion nearby. For example, you can just hang around a jungle camp or make it full of you while you're stacking up to your Q3. This is also why it's important to have your Q3 after using your E as another necessary mobility tool in case the enemy are waiting for you or have an opportunity to engage on you. If you hit someone close with Q3 and follow up with an ultimate, they have a chance to escape the ultimate if they have flat or some sort of ability which can counteract it, like Fiora W. However, if you max range Q3 hit someone, you can prematurely follow up with an ultimate which is not escapable. Here are some interesting facts about your Q that might be good to know. Your Q on hit effects only apply to the person closest to you, meaning if you Q a champion behind minions, you will not get lethal tempo stacks. Lifesteal is only applied to the closest target as well. Here's the weirdest thing about Yon's Q though. If you hit two targets and you have a spell effect which means Arcane Comet, Cyril, Ludens Tempest, Hextech Dragon Soul or Scorch, it actually hits the secondary target rather than the guy closest. And even so, if it's a guy alone, these effects won't even happen at all. Why is this so weirdly inconsistent, right? Alright, you might meet targets like Jax or Shen. If Shen uses his W and you Q him but there are someone behind him, your Q damage actually deals damage to the targets behind. So much for that protection, Shen. This also applies to Jax E, so if someone's behind Jax, it does apply damage to them but not Jax. Your Q ignores being blinded, so Teemo takes damage from it. 
Regarding all of these ability effects I just mentioned, Yon gets a stack of his Q and your tornado of course stuns them. Spell shields however just gives Yon a stack of Q. The last thing I want to mention is that your Q3 animation actually cancels if you throw it into a wall. It just ends faster and allows you to maximize your damage output with E if you are using it at the same time. Be careful that you don't dash over a wall though if you are using this trick. Ok the next ability we got up is your W. As for your W, not much to say here other than just note that you can W flash combo to kill unsuspecting players just like your Q3 flash combo or like Kassadin ult flash combo. The sides of your W is the furthest range your W can go, so if someone is really far away, try to hit them with the corners of your cone. This is a really interesting thing to note, because in League of Legends, this is actually where math is applied to League of Legends, and using these kind of things can actually increase your range on your abilities. For example, this also happens onto Aatrox's second Q, for example. So make sure you actually use this trick for other champions as well that has cones or triangles. Your E is probably one of the most broken abilities in the game, but also works in a very complex way. Let's talk about all the things that are very important to using your E. Your E is actually incredibly helpful with surviving or escaping ganks. If you get ganked, you can simply E towards the enemy tower or the direction you see fit to avoid incoming danger. Doing this will push your return point closer to your tower. While you are in E, try to get Q stacks enough for a Q3. With 5 seconds on the clock, this should be easy work assuming you hit your Qs. This will provide you with 3 benefits. 1. Your enemies might have used their stun or damage abilities, which you could have dodged with your initial dash or ramping movement speed. 2. You now have a Q3 which enemies will almost always outplay themselves with. If an enemy stands on top of your spirit, your Q3 will simply stun them allowing yourself to increase the distance. Note that you're also buffering your Q3 so it can actually go through stuns if people are trying to do this. But regardless, the correct play for enemies would be to stand aside and then apply their spells to not get stunned by your Q3. But not many people actually do that so you kinda outplay them with this. And the third benefit which is a bit more dependent on what your enemies do, which would be that they simply followed you too far in the lane and then you return to a safe spot where they now cannot catch you. Yon's E is so incredible versatile and useful. What I mean by that specifically is that you can use this ability to save time to get tempo. For example, if you're short on 10 gold, you can move right before the inhibitor and stand here to wait for the gold. When you're slowly approaching the gold amount for your item, meaning you're 10 gold behind, simply walk back to the fountain and E bank to the inhibitor. Here's a map for your E where you can utilize this trick. You can also use your E to apply advanced wave theory, such as fixing your wave to be in a favorable position. Without going too in depth into wave theory, if the enemy wave is closer to the enemy tower, the wave will push to you. With this in mind, in a neutral wave state, you can E, tank the coming wave and then walk to the bush. This will eventually make the wave push towards you. The same goes for pushing into towers. You don't want the wave to be right outside the enemy tower as it can leave you in an awkward and exposed spot. Simply E and walk beyond the enemy tower and then tank the enemy wave such that you your wave goes into the enemy tower, giving you a nice recall and the enemy wave is pushing into you. You can also grab playthings in this cool way. Your initial E dash pushes your champion further through thick terrain, kind of similar to how Aatrox E works but not really. This map is useful for Fiora Qs but it works mostly with Yon's E dashes as well. Yon's E is known best for cleansing himself, however it doesn't actually work that way. If you have played Gangplank before, you know that his W can be cast while you're stunned. This is not the case for Yon. If you're stunned, you cannot reactivate your E, and on top of that your E is actually extended until you're allowed to recast, which the game does automatically for you by this point. So if you are in a Mordekaiser ultimate, a Camille ultimate, silence for a long time, etc, you are unable to recast to your position, but you can walk around for a long time. Oh, and the cleanse part? It actually only applies for 0.5 seconds during the recast animation when he sheets his sword. But after that, while dashing back, any stuns applied, like a Twisted Fate gold card or a Serath E, will actually stun him and the duration can still be ongoing. While I was going through the footage I had, and as well as conducting these scripted 1v1 videos with my friend to showcase certain scenarios, I stumbled upon something I thought was a bug. You see, Yon's E gives you displacement immunity, that is clear from the wiki. Displacement immunity gives you immunity from displacements, meaning things that knock you up in the air and including a few other things that are considered displacements, and it also provides immunity to kinematics things that drag you. Sleep and stasis. I thought that it wouldn't provide immunity to suppression, as I thought suppression is the highest form of CC there is. Sure it might be, but that doesn't mean that it can be countered. What I was originally going to talk about in this segment is that nothing can stop you in your ear while you're dashing back to your soul except for suppression. Effectively, Yon can be temporarily stopped by being suppressed until it's over, in which case he continues to go back to his E, not cancel his E outright. That isn't the case however, because suppression makes you unable to control 
about your movement, declare attacks, cast abilities, activate items, or use any summoner spell for the duration. A thorn suppression in itself would also lock you down if you were already in action, like a dash for example. However, not all suppressions stop dashes. It is actually champion specific. Malzahar and Varvik, which were two suppression ultimates that I was talking about here, would in addition also knock down the target, meaning if you were airborne and suppressed, you would quickly be knocked down and unable to do anything. In Yon's case, while you're in your E return dash, you can actually not be affected by these suppressions, as in Malzar's case, you are likely to just escape his range, effectively stopping his suppression, and the same is in Varvik's case. Sed's ultimate is also countered specifically by displacement immunity, so him ulting Yon in his return E won't even affect him. Now, there are champions that apply suppression but also override dashes and displacements, but they have some buts that count for Yon's E. Skarner is one of those champions, but Yon's E is simply too fast for his cast time to go through, so Skarner will just simply not be able to cast it in time. However, there are cases where Skarner's ult will go through, and as a result it will actually cancel Yon's E altogether. Urgot's ult is an interesting one. You can cleanse his chains once they hit you by recasting your own E, but if you don't do it and then recast your E, you'll essentially be dead-ish. You see, if someone is displacement immune, which Yon's return E will do, Urgot will not begin to channel his ultimate after the displacement immunity ends. And if it doesn't end after 5 seconds, or I guess it's 10 according to the wiki, which probably it won't in this case since you're going way too fast back, Urgot's ult will cancel. And we also got Tom Kench, who in contrast will have problems with his cast time, so he's likely not gonna be able to stomp you while you're returning to your ESOL point. If he does, however, you'll just remain inside him for some extra time before being automatically returned to your soul point once you're outside of Tom Kench. And Tom Kench will just straight up swallow you, no fucks given. Before, I actually thought that any suppression whatsoever will straight up stop me temporarily, but only one in reality actually does. You see, the point here with this huge rambling is that actually talking to the void that my 600 or so cuties are, it will improve your gameplay knowledge. Huh, who would have thought that making league topics can improve your skill set? While I thought in this segment I could prove to you guys that Yon's E is not as unstoppable as it seems, this has just deepened the rabbit hole that it is truly an unstoppable force. Woo! That was a lot of information, hopefully you are ready for more. There are things your E will not cleanse at all, which is the disarm portion from Polymorph being grounded by Poppy W for example, nearsighted, silenced or slopes. Kinda weird considering it is a cleanse. Your E cannot be casted or recasted when you are in Mordekaiser ultimate or Camille ultimate. However, in Camille's situation, it is so incredibly inconsistent due to timings and what I'm talking about is, if you recast your E and Camille reacts by ulting you, she will have time enough for the cleanse to not go in effect, meaning that she will stop you. However, if you manage to react in time to Camille ult, you can recast yourself back and cancel it. Now, it's very inconsistent and a bit hard to pull off, but however, the general rule that you can apply here is that you should react to Camille's ultimate when you are in your E, and the way that Camille wins here is that if she reacts to your E going back and then she can pull off with her ultimate, kind of following you and cancelling your E. Your recast happens immediately if you die or resurrect. Your E stores damage, obviously, and this is represented in a mask above an enemy. If they will die to your mask, the mask turns black. If the enemy heals, gains a shield, the mask will not change color, so take care of that. The E damage does not store damage from items, your runes or summoner spells, so the massive damage from Blade of the Rune King will not be stored. People becoming untargetable like Fizz E or Camille R or Kane Ultimate will still take damage from your E. Your E does not store the damage taken from shields, only the HP bar. Another strategy to think about when you are in your E is that if the enemy is waiting for your return, to kill you, but your team is coming to reinforce you, you can purposely extend your E with ultimates, Q3, Sonyas, Blast Cones to delay your E further. This is also the case by walking further away since it will take longer for you to travel back to your soul, giving you that sweet time for your allies to come. You can bait certain champions to your team with your E, for example Maokai W, Queen E, Camille R, Kinda, and Akali E. Alright, enough about your E, let's get to the most useful part here, your ultimate. Your ultimate can actually be used to escape gangs, but not the way you think. You can ultimate inside the alt cloves and reappear in the lane. This is super helpful if the enemy is blocking your escape route. You can also do this through thick terrain. No one can actually stop you from ulting as you become CC immune, well, except for suppressions, like set ultimate for example. If someone is gonna hit a stun that will basically one-shot you, try to respond by ulting back. This will also allow you to actually hit your ult as it's a bit hard to hit since it has a long cast time. If you hit an enemy who is close to a wall, the enemy will not be 
pulled through the wall, but you might end up on the other side. Your ult is longer than it seems, remember that it has a spare head tip which still allows you to hit enemies from afar, and it's very generous as well with the hitbox. Yon's ult actually reveals himself during cast time, so ulting from a bush actually provides vision to the enemy. Okay, so that's pretty much it. If there's something I missed or you have discovered on Yon, let me know in the comments. This is my main after all, and I would be keen to see new tips or tricks. And if you learned something, hopefully you'll leave us up.